Check, check, check. All the leaves on these autumn trees They set the 
gray sky on fire Naked branches are left behind And the whispering winds leave me tired They blow colder than bones upon my face As I slowly shuffle on I shuffle on Good morning. We're glad. Oh, you guys could do better than that, right? Good morning. Good morning. Good, morning. good to see everybody. Oh, yeah. Now we got some ac activity going here. So very good. Uh, my name is Pastor Bob Rudebush. I want to welcome you here to First United Methodist Church. Uh, grateful also to have uh, Pastor Taylor with us in this worship service today. He's going to uh, share with us as we've been sharing in getting ready. And today is the last of that series uh, where we are preparing ourselves for the coming of Christ and also how we, as Christians, uh, live out our lives in preparation. Uh, a few announcements we want to lift up. We want to, again, welcome those who are joining us via live stream. 
Uh, we welcome you. Up in the right-hand corner of the computer, there's a place for you to fill out a Connect card. Uh, also, as well, here in the sanctuary. Uh, also, I'm just curious for you, uh, if you'd fill out in your Connect card, if you're a Dakota Wesleyan graduate or know of someone in your family, uh, just write DWU on your Connect card. And just curious as to how many uh, persons in our congregation uh, have relationships uh, with Dakota Wesleyan University. So when you fill out your Connect card, just put DWU on that, and that will help me out. I appreciate that. Also, on this Tuesday night, we'll have our charge conference. This is our annual meeting uh, in preparation for 2018, and it'll be at 7 o'clock in the multi-purpose room. Uh, all of our congregational members are invited to come and join us and uh, participate in that annual meeting. Our district superintendent, Roger Sparr, will be with us. So look forward uh, to that uh, time of sharing and also continuing not only looking at last year, but also looking uh, at the future in our vision together. We exist here at First United Methodist Church to make disciples for Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And the way that we do that here is to be a sanctuary of Christian hope, love, and encouragement in the heart of Sioux Falls. Uh, we also want to uh, remind you that we have... Our youth are going to Puerto Rico for a mission trip in July, and we've already had the major fundraiser with our turkey dinner, but they're also selling uh, these travel mugs. Uh, with, this is uh, $20, and then there's a coffee mug for 10 and uh, of course all those proceeds go to help them uh, continue fundraising uh, for the trip, and uh, there's something to do with donuts and coffee, and I'll let Taylor explain that later. So, you know, that's just... I couldn't figure it out. I still don't figure it out, but he'll, he'll, he'll let you know how it all works later on. Uh, oh, it says, oh yeah, there we go. So anyway, also our sermon series next week, we start Advent, the season of Advent, and uh, we're going to look at the, the, Christ, the Christmas story through the eyes of Joseph. You know, oftentimes we talk about the angels and we obviously focus on Mary, but this year we're going to just focus on, on Joseph and the, the the important uh, male, male uh, spirituality that he brought to Jesus' life. So look forward to that. Also, we have two studies you can sign up for. One is Faithful Through the Eyes of Joseph, and the other is Advent Women. So we hope that you'll take a moment at our information desk and sign up for them. We now share in our uh, video announcements. Welcome to First United Methodist Church. We're so excited to have you with us for worship today. Here's what's happening at first. This Wednesday, November 29th, we'll be hosting a spaghetti dinner with the Church on the Street community. Along with dinner, we will be passing out gloves and mittens for the Warm Hands, Warm Hearts project. Your response so far has been incredible. Thank you for your generosity. We're still in need of some more scarves. So come eat dinner, help light the Christmas tree, and hand out gloves and hand warmers to those in need as we kick off Advent. Next Saturday, December 2nd, at 2 p.m., all women are invited to attend the Christmas tea. Come for a time of great fellowship, festive music by the Fodi and Climes families, and delicious Christmas goodies. Tickets are on sale now for only $5, with proceeds going to the Big Brothers, Big Sisters program. Invite the women in your life to this fun-filled event. With Advent starting next week, we want to encourage you to invite others to all our upcoming activities. Stop at the Information Center to pick up one of these devotionals to hand out to others. Inside is information on Advent, all our December events, and a schedule of our Christmas Eve schedule. This is a great way for you to invite your friends and family to church this holiday season to celebrate the birth of Christ. If you have any questions about upcoming opportunities, please see your news and events. You'll also find an order of worship and a Connect card, which you can fill out and place in the offering basket later on in the service. Connect cards not only let us know you were with us for worship, they truly are the best way we can get you connected here at first. Now I invite everyone to stand and share in community by greeting those you're worshiping with this morning. 
Welcome to the Sunday worship service at First United Methodist Church at 401 South Spring Avenue in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We're glad you're worshiping with us today on our live stream broadcast at 8.30 and 9.45. Today's sermon title is, Are We Faithful? Pastor Taylor Johnson is giving the message today. We hope you find the worship service a blessing for your life this week. We, we invite you to remain standing as we share together in our call to worship and our opening prayer. Glorious God, shine upon us with your spirit of wisdom and truth. Enlighten our hearts, help us to the hope in which we are called. Reveal your ways that we might share hope and joy in all that we do and all that we say. In the light of the love of Jesus, let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of this beautiful day that you have offered to us in this season of gratitude and thankfulness. Uh, we offer back to you our praise today. We ask that you would uh, stir in our hearts, be with us with the gift of your Holy Spirit, that we may hear your call on each of our lives. Bless us in our time of worship, for we ask this in Jesus' name, and, and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. We'd like you to join in the hymn on 434, and I'm just going to clarify a little if I can. On 434, verses 1 and 2 are on 434. Verses 3 and 4 are on 435, but the chorus, which you sing in all the verses, is at the top of 435. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll follow that with Walk by Faith. <laughs>
Amen. Please be seated. This time uh, we're grateful to celebrate in the sacrament of baptism. And uh, so we're going to invite those who are going to share in that baptism today. Just to remind you, there's a place for your response. It's in your uh, worship folder. It's also on the, the screen uh, for us together. Well, dearly beloved, uh, baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, through which grace we become partakers of his righteousness and heirs of life eternal. Those receiving the sacrament are thereby marked as Christian disciples and initiated into the fellowship of Christ's holy church. Our Lord has expressly given to little children a place among the people of God, which holy privilege must not be denied them. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, how he said, Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. So Jeff and Jasmine and sponsors, um, do you in presenting Oakley and Barrett in, for holy baptism confess your faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? If so, answer, we do. Do you therefore accept as your bounden duty and privilege to live before these children, a life that becomes the gospel, to exercise all godly care, that they be brought up in the Christian faith, that they be taught the Holy Scriptures and that they would learn to give the reverent attendance upon the private and public worship of God? So answer, we do. Will you endeavor to keep Oakley and Barrett under the ministry and guidance of the church until they, by the power of God, shall accept for themselves the gift of salvation and be confirmed as a full and responsible member of Christ's holy church? If so, answer, we will.
Let us pray. Eternal God, you've been known to us through the acts of salvation and mostly through water. From the moving of your spirit upon the waters of creation to the deliverance of your people through the flood and through the Red Sea. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb, baptized by John and anointed by his spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. O oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water that Oakley and Baird, as they receive it, would wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. And all of God's people said, Amen. Question to turn the microphone on. Yeah, All right. All right, Barrett. Yeah. Uh, happy we're taking yeah. Barrett John Raymond Bull, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, I know, I know. Okay, now we're going to take one each. Oh, I guess we're walking. So my friends, we share in that response as being the community of faith and uh, celebrate uh, with the reception of Oakley and Barrett into the church. Will you join me as we respond together? With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ that Barrett John Raymond and Oakley Ray Ann Bohr, surrounded by steadfast love, may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way that leads to life eternal. Let us pray. O oh God, grant that Barrett and Oakley, as they grow in years, may also grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, and by the restraining and renewing influence of the Holy Spirit, they may ever be true child, children of yours, serving you faithfully all their days. So guide and uphold their parents and sponsors that by love and care, wise counsel, and holy example, they may lead them into that life of faith whose strength is righteousness and whose fruit is everlasting joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. We uh, have a couple of gifts here for you. Uh, these are candles uh, to remind you that every year on the anniversary of their baptism that you would like these, help them remember their baptism. And we also have these certificates. And so we'll have you be seated. I think, um, congratulations. We're going to have Jasmine's sister is going to share with us a blessing song.
everyone is equal darkness turns to light and the world is at peace these miracles god gave to me give me strength when i am weak i find reason to believe in my children's eyes and when they wrap their hand around my finger oh it puts a smile of who I am and what will be and though they'll grow and one day be maybe raise a family when I'm gone I hope they'll see how happy they made me for I There's no greater blessing than celebrating the gift of baptism and reminding us, each of us, of our baptisms as well as we as the gathered community uh, worshiping and praising God today. We uh, have a great opportunity now to respond to this great grace that God offers to us by offering uh, the gifts that God has given to us back to God. Uh, we also remind you that the Connect card, uh, we play, invite you to place that in the uh, offering basket as it comes around. And uh, if there are other prayer concerns or joys, you can place those in there as well. Uh, we uh, invite our ushers now to wait upon us as we give our tithes, our offerings, and our gifts to God. And our uh, offering song is Beautiful Things.
us pray. God, we see evidence of your grace all around us and in worship today. The gift of your overwhelming love that seeks us out, that searches for us, that calls us home. Lord, in the midst of our worship this day, we, we want to express to you our gratitude and thankfulness. Help us to truly be open to the power of your spirit, not only in these moments of worship, but as we leave this place, as you seek us, we may find you. We gather as your people to celebrate the goodness of life through gifts of birthdays and anniversaries. We're mindful of Merle and Maxine Duba today. They celebrated their 65th this week. We are mindful of many of the gracious and good and rich things of life. And we celebrate those today. We also pray and ask your blessing to be with Elliot, uh, with Sammy, with Brett, with Cheryl on her birthday. And there are many other names and situations and things in our hearts today. We lift these names, these people, to you today, Lord. Offer the gift of your grace and blessing. We celebrate with Jeff and Jasmine and Oakley and Barrett the gift of your grace. So surround us all this day, O Lord. May the light of your presence surround us and give us the gift of your power, your strength, your courage to overcome the darkness. For we ask this in Jesus' name who invited his disciples to pray with him. He said, pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We continue in our worship by uh, hearing the, the song by our chancel choir, 10,000 Reasons. <clears throat>
Thank you, Chancel Choir. Uh, such a gift to uh, be able to, to hear the words of, of worship and song this morning. Uh, before we dive too far into our, our text, I, I wanted to explain um, what this coffee mug, uh, the, the part where there's a relationship with, with donuts. Here's the recommended process. Once you leave the sanctuary today, you're going to head out to the information center. You're going to buy one of each of these. And you're also going to buy a gift card to Flyboy Donuts. They are delicious donuts, I promise you. Then some morning, you're going to make your coffee at home however you like it, with however much or however less cream you want, sugar, whatever additives you put into your coffee. You'll then fill your travel mug on your way to Flyboy Donuts. You can enjoy your coffee. You pick up your donuts, you bring them home, then you fill up your cup. You enjoy coffee and donuts together. It's a great process, and it helps the youth. Makes sense, right? How can't you get that part? I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I give Bar Bob a hard time. Uh, it was his birthday yesterday, and uh, uh, we, we celebrate his birthday. And um, he texted me, and he said, hey, thanks for, thanks for the birthday present of, of preaching this week. And I responded back, what? <laughs> and I got to be careful. Because we know, Bob, you're getting up there, and I didn't want to give you a heart attack, but I had to do it. Uh, we celebrate uh, the gift of, of Bob and uh, his leadership, though, and uh, thankful for all you do. I know I speak on behalf of the church when I say thank you for, for your presence and your guidance uh, in our lives, so thank you so much. Let us read now. Uh, we've been in this, this sermon series, Are We Ready?, and we are looking at the, the three stories in Matthew 25, and we're going to read from uh, verses 31 through 46. So I invite you to read along on the screen or in your news and events. If you have the Bible app on your phone or tablet, I encourage you to uh, get that out and read along with uh, today. It is also, if you want to follow along in the pew in your Bibles, as we hear the words of Matthew 25. Now when the human one comes in his majesty and all his angels are with him, he will sit on his majestic throne. All the nations will be gathered in front of him, and he will separate them from each other, just as a shepherd, shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right side, but the goats he will put on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you will receive good things from my father. Inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you before the world began. I was hungry, and you gave me food to eat. 
I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me in. I was naked, and you gave me clothes to wear. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then those who are righteous will reply to him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and give you clothes to wear? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? Then the king will reply to them, I assure you that when you have done it for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you have done it for me. Then he will say to those on his left, get away from me. You will receive terrible things. Go into the unending fire that has been prepared for the devil and his angels. I was hungry and you didn't give me food to eat. I was thirsty and you did not give me anything to drink. I was a stranger and you didn't welcome me. I was naked and you didn't give me clothes to wear. I was sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, but Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and didn't do anything to help you? Then he will answer, I assure you that when you haven't done it for one of the least of these, you have not done it to me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous ones will go into eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are thankful this day for your word as we have been getting ready over these last few weeks. We ask that you would continue to work in us, help us to get ready through this passage. We're thankful that your word would speak to us, that the words that Jesus spoke to those thousands of years ago would still be relevant to us this day. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing unto you this day as we have gathered as your people. It is in the name of the Christ that we pray. Amen. Are we ready? That is the question we've been asking over the last few weeks. In week one, we looked at the parable Of the ten bridesmaids, five of them were unprepared. They did not bring enough oil. And because of that, they were left out when the groom arrived. We looked at the parable of the valuable coins, the talents, that God encourages us, God commands us to use his gifts that he gives us wisely and not bury them into the ground for safety and fear. But instead, we are to be reliable. And this morning, we ask the question, are we faithful? Are we faithful in being ready? Pick, uh, close your eyes, if you would, with me. The beginning of this scripture is what Jesus has been preparing us for, has been getting us ready for. Hear these words again. Now, when the human one comes in his majesty and all his angels are with him, He will sit on his majestic throne. Picture that. Jesus is in front of us. Jesus is there in the heavens, surrounded by the host, in his full glory, to the point where we probably won't even be able to have our faces up. We will be down on the ground in awe, in reverence. What an amazing time it will be. The angels will be surrounding him, singing songs of praise and honor. As God, through Jesus, sits on the throne of mercy and grace. Friends, that is what we are getting ready for. Nothing more, and certainly nothing less. We are getting ready for the return of Christ Jesus. And what a glorious day it will be. And on that day, there will be a separation as, this, as our scripture tells us. It's the judgment of the nations that all will come before Christ. All people from all times will come before Jesus. The separation will be exact. It's going to be perfect and precise. Psalm 1.5 alludes to the fact that the separation will be so exact that even the worst of the sheep will still be among the sheep and even the best and most pleasant of the goats will still be among the goats. 
This is what Jesus has been getting us ready for. And we read verse 34. The king will say to those on his right, The sheep, come you who will receive good things from my father. Inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you before the world began. How exciting is that? That this is what God had intended for us. God had intended for us to be faithful followers of Jesus Christ. Long before the world was ever made, God prepared a place for us when we responded accordingly. This was the original design for humans, was to respond to the love of God in our life. And we respond according to Jesus in verse 35 and 39. It says, I was hungry and you gave me food to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothes to wear. I was sick and you took care of me. And I was in prison and you visited me. That is the basis of how we we get ready. We get prepared for the coming of Christ. Those who are righteous replied to Jesus, Lord, when did we see you like this? Now, if I'm being completely honest, if Jesus says I did all those things, okay, you bet. You're right, I did. I'm not going to question you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm not going to say, Lord, when when did that happen? Anybody else kind of just going to take Jesus' word for it? But these, this question was asked because much like us, Jesus knows that we will not have ever seen Jesus in his physical form. Unlike the disciples and the people of the time, we will have never seen what Jesus actually looks like. So then maybe that question does make sense, right? Lord, when did I ever see you? I have no idea it was you. Lord, when did, when did I see you hungry or thirsty? When did I see you as a stranger, especially us as people who go to church, Lord, we've, we've, I'm pretty sure we've seen you at some point. But Jesus says to us, whatever you have done to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you have done unto me. This, this passage says, I assure you, but I think a, a, one of the more powerful ways of responding is in a different translation when it says, truly I tell you, Jesus is speaking in nothing but truth to us, that when we have done these to the least of these, we have done unto Christ. What this does for us is it gives us a picture of the king's heart. We have to completely refocus our thought on the least. That word, when it comes to mind, means lowly. It means last. It means the bottom. But what Jesus is telling us in this passage is not that, but instead that Christ sees himself in the least of these, and we ought to do the same. And if we are to admire the least of these as we would admire Christ, and serve the least of these as we would serve Christ, truly the word least has a completely different connotation for us. That we would no longer see the hungry, the thirsty, the naked, the stranger, the sick and the imprisoned as least, but rather first. So Jesus is telling us to change our perspective on how we know things. And then we get to the part that we don't often like to talk about. We don't like to hear this kind of thing in Scripture. Because we know this this book speaks truth. And in the the church, in the modern church especially, I I do believe that we've painted God with, with... too broad of a brush of nothing but peace and mercy. While that is what God is, we must not forget that God is also just. God is also true. It says, then the king will reply, then he will say to those on the left, this is one of the most heartbreaking verses to me in scripture. He will reply to those on the left, on the left, get away from me, you will receive terrible things. I say that because if I'm being completely honest, I know I'm not to worry, but I worry that that might be the words spoken to me. Because I know what the rest of the scripture says. You didn't feed the hungry when there was one in front of you. You didn't give somebody something to drink when it was pretty obvious. You didn't meet the basic needs of your brothers and sisters around you.
It, this verse even goes on to say, go into the unending fire that has been prepared for the devil and his angels. This is not a place that was built for us as people. It was not a place intended for followers of Christ. And he responds to them in a very similar way. He says, when I was hungry, you didn't give me something to eat. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me anything to drink. I was a stranger and you didn't welcome me in. I was naked and you didn't give me clothes. I was sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us. There's a story that's been told about a church that one day was receiving a new pastor and there was excitement in the congregation. They wanted to find out who it was. They wanted to know who the new leader was going to be of their church, and so they did everything they could to prepare for the, the new pastor. And on that morning, a man who looked homeless came in. He was unshaven, unclean, had not showered in a few days, probably hadn't washed his clothes in over a month. To many of the church members, it was not pleasant. Among the 7,000 in worship that morning, only three people had greeted this man. When he asked for change for food or where he might be able to get something to eat, he was denied every single time. He came into the sanctuary preparing for the service. He sat in the front row and was asked to move to the back. The service started as the man was in the back he heard, of the, he heard the announcements and the excitement in the leadership team. Friends, today we are welcoming our new pastor. Would you please help us in welcoming Pastor Jeremiah Stepit? And the crowd erupted. The congregation applauded and cheered. They were so excited. This day had finally come, only for the cheers to die quickly as the homeless man in the back stood up and walked forward. He went to the pulpit and shared his experience from the morning. He read to him, read to the congregation this scripture, and he said the church is filled with enough people. What it needs to be filled with is disciples of Jesus Christ. And he reminded them that what you do to the least of these brothers and sisters you have also done unto Jesus. It's a very powerful, quite an extreme story. But it's one for us to, to realize that our preconceived notions are not often right. And there's an important word in this scripture for us. It's the word and. Such a simple English word. I was hungry and you didn't give me food to eat. I was thirsty and you didn't give me anything to drink. You saw a problem and you didn't do it. You didn't respond faithfully. That's a hard pill for us to swallow. In church, we need to be honest. We're getting pretty good at the food thing. We really are at serving the hungry through the banquet and through our service of the night watch and serving breakfast in the morning. The night watch van is even expanding that it's serving out west throughout the week. Friends, are, are, we, we've gotten pretty good at the food and feeding the hungry and giving something to drink to the thirsty. We're, we're even pretty good at visiting the sick in the hospital. We've got a group of people who go and visit the sick and the, those in the nursing home. We're getting pretty good at that. And we're even taking a step and getting better about clothing the naked. Not necessarily completely naked, but this Wednesday we're handing out gloves and hand warmers to those who don't have any in our community and another opportunity for us to feed the hungry we're starting to get pretty good at that but again if we're honest this is myself included I don't know how good of a job we are at welcoming the stranger sure when we invite a friend in it's easier for us to well, make them feel welcome but how about someone who walks completely out of nowhere we have not a single soul in this room would know who they are are they welcomed it's hard for us to, to welcome the stranger. What if I don't have anything in common with them? In a day of growing culture, what if I don't even speak the same language as them? 
What if I don't have the words to say? It's not easy. Even visiting the imprisoned. Our culture would tell us that within the traditional context of an imprisoned person, maybe they deserve to be there. They've done something to warrant that, that punishment, that consequence. But what if we look at the word imprisoned in a different way? What if we're not talking about the imprisoned that are in jail? What if we're talking about the imprisoned of those who are locked away in their depression? Those who are locked away in fear and stress in their lives? That we're not visiting those who are imprisoned by the, the struggles of this world? It's not easy to do. It's easier for us to do those things of feeding the hungry and giving clothes out, visiting the sick. It's easy to take care of those that we know, but that's not kingdom-based. And that's what this scripture, these three scriptures that we've read over the last few weeks, that's what it's been all about. We are kingdom people. We are simply ambassadors here on to earth to do the good work of God, to show love and mercy and grace to people. The scripture has two really important things for us to remember. The first is that our salvation and our entrance into the kingdom was never about us. While the beginning of the passage does say that it was a place created for us, a place prepared for us before the world began, it's important to note that the scripture does not say the king knows us by how much money we have or gave. It doesn't say that the king knows us based on how often and how many times we opened our Bible. The king doesn't know us based on how many times we went to church and worshipped and tithed. It doesn't know us based on how many activities we attended throughout the year. Our entrance into the kingdom is based on whether we actually fully care about the least, the lost, and the lowly. And that's what Jesus modeled in his death and resurrection. That Jesus cared for the least, the lost, and the lowly, the least deserving. Myself included. And the second thing for us to remember... These have been really hard scriptures to dive into. Like we talked about earlier, the, uh, the five bridesmaids that were left out, the door was closed, and the host said, I don't know you. In the parable of the valuable coins, the one who squandered the gift was sent out to the edge of the city with the gnashing of teeth and the weeping. It's not an easy thing for us to comprehend. And even in this scripture, the Lord says to the unfaithful, get away from me. It's easy for us to get afraid by that. It's easy for us to fall into fear. But this is not about, it's never been about being afraid, but instead it's about being ready. Are we ready? Remember the first thing we thought of the, in, as we read this scripture? Are we ready for the coming of Jesus again? Are we ready and prepared to encounter the King of Kings sitting in his full glory, surrounded by angels? God asks us, asks us today, are we faithful to God through our faithfulness to the least? In our faithfulness to the least, we must make choices. We must choose to love. We must choose to do those things because we're not meant to dwell in a place that was meant for the devil and his angels. That's not the place that was prepared for us. So why do we choose so often to prepare for that place? By not feeding the hungry, by not giving something to drink to the thirsty. So friends, it's time to go. It's time to get ready. The king is coming. We don't know the day or the time or the hour or even the second. We don't even have an idea of what millennium it's going to happen in. But it might be soon. So get ready. Go feed the hungry. Go clothe the naked. Welcome the stranger in. Go visit the sick and the imprisoned. 
Go love the least as you would love Christ. Let us pray. God, we confess that we have been people who did not do those things that you have called us to do. We have treated others as though they were not Christ within our presence. Forgive us. We know that you are a God of grace and forgiveness. So help us this day to go as forgiven people to do those things, to be ready, that we would be faithful to those you have called us to be faithful to. And we can hear you say, come, you who will receive good things from my Father, that we would be in the place that you have prepared for us. May it be so this day. We pray this in the name of Jesus and Christ. And all of God's people said, amen. Uh, We're going to uh, sing Let It Rise and have you join with us on that. But first, we do have a couple staff members who have birthdays. Cheryl Finney's birthday was up there in the booth. Uh, Our projectionist, it was her birthday today. It is her birthday today. And Pastor Bob's birthday yesterday, correct? So we're going to sing happy birthday to Bob and Cheryl. Uh, Hang on. Lynn Jones is also Tuesday, correct? Wednesday. Wednesday. All right. We weren't going to forget. Coming up Wednesday? We'll catch her next week. (laughs) Happy birthday. Stand, please, for Let It Ride.
Let us share in our sending forth together. It is not enough to acclaim Jesus Christ as our Lord and King. Our mission in life is to make God's kingdom a reality among us and to bring it to those around us by our words and deeds. The way to do this is to live as he lived for others, in love and service. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and to give shape to his kingdom. We go out as spirit-filled disciples of Jesus to be a sanctuary of Christian hope, love, and encouragement in the heart of Sioux Falls. Amen. Again, we're glad to have each of you here, especially our visitors, guests. There's time for coffee in our friendship room directly behind the sanctuary. And uh, we hope and you pray that you have a great week this week. We end with We Are Called. Thank you for worshiping with us today. First United Methodist Church has three worship services every Sunday. 8.30, traditional service. 9.45, unity. A vibrant, multi-generational service. 11 o'clock, modern. A casual, upbeat to modern service. If you want any more information, call 336-3652 or check our website at www.sfumc.org. Thank you for worshiping with us, and may you have a God-filled week.
spinach dip, some vegetable dip in your fridge. Okay, it's only like a little couple of little bit. Thank you. What time are we supposed to be there? Green.